the last few um, uh, weeks we were we were uh, meditating on some of the heroes of the Bible which God used and not only just the heroes but uh, about some mantles that God is releasing we were um, how many of you would remember we, we were meditating about Deborah's mantle Deborah's anointing and that is going to be released in 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 these days and that is already working in in the last days or in church and the same way Shamgar anointing anointing to stand alone and use what God has given maybe small or big influence the kingdom of God like Shamgar the next thing what we uh, meditated was about Esther's anointing how Esther even though God was unseen in that chapter everywhere you see the hand of God working hallelujah and all things were working for good um, uh, as as the book of Romans says for, for the, the one who love God and the, uh, who are called for the purpose of God and today we'll be meditating about something that very very um, important and that is the um, spirit of Elijah that God, God is speaking what is the spirit it's not just a, um, in the Old Testament thing spirit of Elijah is something that God is it's, it is a system everybody says system God has certain systems that God uses you know enemy has certain systems God has certain systems anointing of Deborah is a system of God and anointing of, of Esther was a system of God. You know, God works in many ways. And one of the most important way that God works is through the spirit of Elijah. That is a system. Enemy has many systems. Enemy, one of the system of enemy is Cain's anointing. You know, the, how, how um, to use Cain. You know, how Cain was a, a killer of the brother. I think it's... Uh, how late? So Cain is one of the system of the enemy. Second system of the enemy is Nimrod. You can see Nimrod. Nimrod wanted to go up, exalt itself, exalt himself above God and to bring all powers of darkness to down. That is a system. Enemy uses even today that, that system of Nimrod. You can see, I, I'm not making it up. Some of the video games, the name is Nimrod. Where did it come from? Nimrod is not a big prominent figure in the Bible, but it came, that is a system of the enemy. Next system is a, is a, is a lady goddess and lady that is uh, Jezebel. You can see in the, in the um, book of 1 Kings and uh, you know, in, in, the, in the chapters of the Old Testament. Jezebel was a, is a system. It's not just a lady, but it is a system of the enemy. The, what Jezebel do is, she wants to sit in high places, in high places where authorities are taken. Enemy places such figures on top. She, what she is hungry is for the people with authority. She will go against the prophets of God, anointed ones of God, and that is an office of the enemy. And there are many, any such offices, offices of Diana. You can see many in the spiritual realm, there are many offices, you know, we are not here to discuss all of them. And I'll just give a, give a small picture. And uh, um, this about Elijah is one of the main office of, of the Bible, which God has promised the church. That is the anointing, that is the spirit of Elijah. When we read in Luke chapter 1 verse 17, the angel of God is speaking to Zechariah, the priest the, uh, who, who was in the temple, the most holy place. And uh, here we see you know, the angel speaking like this. And he will go, you know, he's speaking about John, the Baptist, the son that will be born to Elizabeth. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hallelujah. He will go before with the spirit of Elijah. Spirit of Elijah, you can see, 
you, you can take it down because the, I, I believe these are very important uh, messages for the, uh, for the church in these days. And most of them, you know, the Lord was speaking through me you know, in, in the last season um, uh, in dreams and visions. Most of them, you know, most of the topics that, that I share and most of the things, verses, it, it, the Lord was speaking through visions and dreams. And I believe this is going to be very powerful. This is something that beyond what our physical eyes would see. Hallelujah. God is, is going to um, uh, pour out such anointing and to, to people who are going to believe. Hallelujah. Maybe someone who is listening online and uh, somewhere you, you are, you are you know, seated far away from Melbourne. But whatever it is, the spirit of Elijah is an, is a, is an anointing before God steps in. Hallelujah. The spirit of Elijah was, was, is, is not about a person's name. Hallelujah. It is known with Elijah, but it is not just a person's name. It is an office. It is, it is a, the spirit that God brings to the, you know, pours out to the church in, in many people, many personals who are hungry. Before God steps in, always the anointing of Elijah will show up. Hallelujah. What is so, so much important about um, uh, spirit of Elijah? If you read about John, if we, we can study a little bit about John, John the Baptist. In the, in the gospel of John, you know, we, we know Apostle John is the most closest disciple, which we know, uh, who walked with Jesus, who stood near the cross of Jesus. And when he introduced John the Baptist, he introduced, not, he, he didn't introduce like Luke did. He did not give any genealogy or anything. When you read the um, Gospel of John, he said, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. That's it. That is the introduction Apostle John gave to John the Baptist. You, if you remember, this is similar to the introduction that Bible gave to Elijah. Hallelujah. You don't know anything. From nowhere a person came. From nowhere. We don't know what he was doing. What is he? Where he comes from. You know, only the place or the town that he belonged was, was recorded in 1 Kings chapter 17. And here, Apostle John is introducing John the Baptist, one of the major, one of the prophets, the last prophet of the Old Testament like this. There was a, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came with witness, as a witness to testify concerning the light. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What an introduction. A man who is sent by God. Hallelujah. John the Baptist's life was, he was a man of God. Everybody say man of God. Man of God means he don't have any other priorities. Everything that he's in from early morning to till he sleeps, everything he does for the Lord. Whatever he speaks, he speaks to the about the Lord. What the what Lord wants, he will speak. What God wants, he will do. And that is a man of God. Hallelujah. When you see in the New Testament, Apostle Paul speaks to Timothy like this. But but as of you, O man of God. Flee from these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 11. Man of God. Man of God means, you know, can we, can we say, I am a man of God. I am a man of God. Why? Because all my priorities is what heaven wants. All my priority is what the heart of God is longing for. Whatever we speak, whatever we do, is such a person is known as a man of God. I remember, you know, um, pa uh, Reverend um, Vie Thambi, who, who passed away very recently, one of the generals of, of the um, kingdom. And uh, he once testified about a, a, another evangelist whose name was Ashari Upadeshi. You, I don't know, maybe you may be knowing. But Reverend V.A. Thambi said like this, Ashari, about Ashari Upadeshi, he was a man of God. He is a man of God. He lived as a man of God. And he was, in, in that note, he was, um, he wrote like this, 
One, one early morning, five o'clock, Reverend B.A. Thambi was praying. He was in his, um, in his prayer time, five o'clock in the morning. Suddenly the Lord spoke and said, I'm, I'm going to send Ashari to you. You have to give him 50,000 Indian rupees. 50,000 Indian rupees on those days is like $10,000 now. So 50,000 Indian rupees, you have to give it to him. When Pastor Viyatambi heard this voice, he wanted to lift his voice. He was about to lift his voice and say, yes, Lord. But before he could lift the hand, what he said is the calling bell rang. Early morning, 5 o'clock. He opened not to not to to be you know surprised it is ashari budeshi standing five o'clock in the morning you know what he he wrote like this this evangelist said like this god has asked me to come to you uh, for fifty thousand dollars now give me my money i want to go man of god see that's how he's saying if this money is not for him this money is for the kingdom of God. He knew, hallelujah, that is a man of God's authority. If God has spoken to me, he knows. If God has spoken to me, he will arrange it. Hallelujah. Now give me my money. I have to go far away. Quick. Give me. Hallelujah. He went inside, gave the money. That's it. Two minutes, gone. No tea, nothing. And Pastor um, Reverend uh, Vietambi was wondering. I, never, I didn't ask him how he came so early morning. How did they come? He came and he left. That's it. That is, that is how a man of God works. He works according to what God wants. He doesn't think about himself. He doesn't have any priorities. But the only priority that he has is the kingdom of God. Work, speak for the kingdom. Whatever he speaks, he represents God's voice. Whatever he speaks and thinks, he represents the heaven's voice. Hallelujah. That's why um, Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy like this. But as of you, man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and steadfastness. Hallelujah. When you see um, Elijah's introduction in the Bible, we read like this, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Now, Elijah, the Tishbeite from Tishbe, in Gilgal, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few days except at my words. Hallelujah. That is the confidence of a man of God. Hallelujah. But we read in, 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 the, in the book of James, Elijah is a man just like our nature. Elijah was a man who was in our own nature. He fervently prayed. He prayed fervently, earnestly, in some of the, well, some of the verses says. He did not just show up to Ahab just like that. Before coming to Ahab, he spent time of earnest praise. Before coming and building an altar and asking God to pour out the fire, he spent years praying about this. Hallelujah. See, about John and Elijah, similarity is, in those days when John was, was um, the voice from the wilderness, in those days, the word of God was limited. There was no, the Israelites have already turned away from God. And now, Elijah's time, they were already just like our time, you know. Baal is ruling the whole nation. The spiritual system is completely turned around. Black magicians and sorceries were reigning in that, in that country. Every decision was made through Jezebel and Ahab who worshipped Baal, the black magicians. Hallelujah. Every, everything was controlled in the enemy, by the enemy. And all the prophets of God has gone to hiding. And there is one man who went straight to the palace of the king and said like this, until I say, he did not say that until God say, until I say there will not be any dew, there will not be any rain. Hallelujah. 
And that is the spirit of Elijah. When nobody is there, when no one would raise their voice, Elijah raised the voice. Elijah was a man of prayer. He went straight and he declared like this, with authority, hallelujah, upon my voice. If, if, unless I say, unless I command, nothing is going to happen. Can we say like that? In, in, you know, when you have a prayer life like Elijah, when you have a prayer life, praying for, for, for your family, praying for your generation, praying for the land, you also can rise up like this, Elijah, and say, until I say, nothing is going to go wrong. Hallelujah. Until I say, you know, th this thing is not going to happen. I will not allow such thing to happen in my family. I will not allow such thing to happen in my workplace. With authority, just like Elijah. Elijah declared like that. Hallelujah. King is the one who should declare, right? In a, in a kingdom, king is the one who makes declarations. This is going to happen until I say this is going to happen. Now Elijah is standing in the midst of the black magicians. He is standing in the midst of the sorcerers. He is standing there looking at the face of the king and said, until I say, until I declare, there will not be any rain. Hallelujah. See, that is the introduction of Elijah. Intr introduction of Elijah is you know, that is the platform when the black magicians were ruling the nation. When everything was decided by them, when every enemy was taking the stronghold and there was not even a man of God to be seen in that whole entire country, a man stood up and that is the voice of Elijah. Hallelujah. When you, with this mantle, when God pours, you know, every fear will be gone and you will have that burden until you speak, that burden will never go up. Hallelujah. Until you go and speak, until you start praying, that burden will never go up. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of Elijah. And God is going to pour that spirit upon the church, upon the people who are hungry in the last days. Because spirit of Elijah is something that is, that is have to come before the appearance of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the last days, this is one of the most main um, scheme that the Lord has put upon the church. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of anointing. Uh, Elijah. The spirit of Elijah was ordained for certain reasons. The first thing is to restore the pattern of God. Hallelujah. Whatever the pattern of God had to be restored in the land. Had to be restored. And that is the main important burden that El the spirit of Elijah would give. This should not be like this. Oh, this family should not go through this. This is not the will of the Father. This is not the pattern of heaven. This is not what the Lord wants. Hallelujah. They will not be compromising with what the enemy is saying. They will never say yes to what the enemy would say. This is better. No, that is not the way what the Lord wants. That is not the way the will of the Father is. Hallelujah. First thing is to bring everything Restore to the pattern of God. Second is, be the voice of God telling about Christ. John the Baptist was the voice in the wilderness. Nobody understood voice. You know, about John, his ministry was shadowed by the ministry of Jesus Christ. No, but he is not a prominent figure. He was not, not you know, when Jesus came, he was hidden. All his disciples went with Jesus. Only a few of them were left. Hallelujah. And he was a hidden hero of the Bible. But Bible says, you know, he was greatest among the Old Testament. You know, one of the main reasons, I believe, is even though there was no miracle happening in his ministry, you can't see any physical ministry. There was a multiplication of bread or uh, um, no reported no reports about healings in his ministry. But what happened is, the greatest miracle happens in, in his ministry. That is, Bible says people repented when he spoke. Hallelujah. The greatest min miracle that the Bible speaks is not that the dead would be raised, people would be healed or anything. But the greatest miracle Bible even speaks today is a heart of a 
sinner be changed and he being cleansed by the precious blood of the Lamb. When a sinner repents, that is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. In his ministry, he saw the greatest miracle in the whole Bible. When he spoke the, wo the voice of the Lord, the Holy Spirit touched them. Holy Spirit changed them. Their hearts were given. Hallelujah. Sinners came to him and they said, I want to be baptized by you. Baptize me. What should I do to be righteous? Oh, baptized. There was no miracle. But in his word, people changed their heart. Hallelujah. One of the main things about the spirit of Elijah is when, this, when that anointing is upon you, even, that you, even in the simple words that you speak, it touches the heart of people. It touches and tears the heart. And they will come back into righteousness. That is, that is why the angel said like this. They will bring back the people. They will bring back. They will bring back. Disobedience will be broken. And they will come back into repentance. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of Elijah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I feel like praying for a moment right now. Lord, I pray, Lord Father. An anointing on, on, on the tongues, Lord. On the lips, Lord Jesus. Just like on the days of John. When you open the mouth hearts be open in the name of Jesus Christ Have certain family members who are rebellious who are against you when you open there will be a favor of God flowing in your favor hallelujah certain hearts certain realms be open in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah that is the spirit of Elijah spirit of Elijah spirit of Elijah you know Bible speaks like this. Elijah was a, you know, his, his ministry was not very prominent because there was no miracles. Nothing is happening. But one thing happened. Greatest miracle. The son of God, the lamb of, of almighty God who has come to take away the sin of the world. The Messiah himself has come to Elijah. And why are you here? I want to be baptized by you. That is the system of God. Father God designed it that way that my son had to go and be baptized under this Elijah anointing, under the John the Baptist. A man who don't have anything to boast about. People may not even invite him to their house for a dinner because he, he wears certain odd clothes and he he have certain preferences uh, with the food you know he like to have bugs and all certain you know certain things and you know you can't serve a dinner to a person like that people don't invite him people like to invite like people you know certain um, uh, uh, people like Judas the Iscariot come have a dinner but they don't want to call John the Baptist, you know, he just, he, you can't serve him dinner like that because he likes to eat locust and honey, wild honey. You, know, you, can't, you can't give like that. So that is the problem. But you know, when the world rejects, God accepts. Yes. And there is no shortcuts for that. Bible says, Jesus went to John the Baptist and the heavens were opened. Heavens were open. That means 30 years Jesus walked. Heavens were closed. Heavens were not open. And one fine day when he went. That is the principle of the Bible. Hallelujah. When God gives you mentors. When God gives you spiritual authorities. Your heavens will be open only under them. Hallelujah. No matter what happens. They may not do any miracles. They may not be good preachers. They may not be. But when God shows you, that is the system. If you want to see heavens open, and when you want to hear that voice from heaven, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased with. And if you want to hear that, this is the system. The Messiah, the name above all names, has come in search of a man called John the Baptist and said, I want to be baptized. And immediately, Bible says, the heavens were open. Heavenly realms started to open. The voice of God came down. Hallelujah. And this is the power. That is the anointing of Elijah. 
anointing of Elijah. God will give you sons and daughters. Can I prophesy? God will give you spiritual sons and daughters when you carry this mantle in your life. Hallelujah. The mantle of anointing. Mantle of Elijah. Hallelujah. Which John was carrying. Hallelujah. Even though he did not perform any miracles, sons and daughters were given to him. Spiritual. Hallelujah. Third, there was a prayer mantle upon Elijah. Elijah was a man with a nature like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three, and a, three years and six months. Matthew chapter 7 was, you know, by the way, I will just touch that too. Matthew chapter 7 was 7 onwards. We, we um, read like this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and it will, you will find. Knock, the doors will be opened. These are three realms of prayer. Hallelujah. Asking realm. Seeking realm. In prayer, we, we, we don't just ask. We don't ask. We don't just ask. But we also seek the face of God. We also seek the will of God. Lord speak. Lord, I want to seek your face. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it is not just seeking, but there is an, another realm, and that is a knocking realm. Hallelujah. Certain doors that you know God can do it, but I am going to keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Knock certain doors which was shut for the other previous generations. Knock, knock, knock. Hallelujah. Knock for revival doors be opened. Knock that this, this land, certain doors be opened. Certain connections be opened. In the name of Jesus. Keep on knocking. Bible says, when you ask, you will, you will receive. To the one who seeks, he finds. And to the one who knocks, those will be opened. Which of you, the, if the son asks for you, the bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know to give good gifts to your children. Good gifts. Hallelujah. In prayer, what we receive is Good gifts. Good gifts. God is a giver of good gifts. Hallelujah. And fourth one is the spirit of Elijah equips to stand alone. Hallelujah. Stand alone. Stand alone. Stand alone. Even though nobody is there. All the people are, have gone for hiding. That, that spirit of Elijah will give you the courage to stand alone. If something is not right, no, I will stand alone. I will stand if I'm the only one in the family. I will stand alone, but I will not compromise. I will stand alone. No matter all the other people have gone and hiding, but I will stand alone. That is the spirit of Elijah. Does. Hallelujah. That is what God is pouring out. Hallelujah. And fifth one is not just, it is not just about public ministry. Spirit of Elijah will take you sometimes in a time of isolation. When you read about Elijah's ministry, we read like this, in, um, after he declared, you know, until I say nothing is going to happen. The next very verse says like this, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kerith ravine, east of Jordan, you will drink from the brook, and I, I have directed ravens to supply with the food there. The word Kerith means isolation. Word Kerith also means to be cut off, cut off from other places. And it also means circulation, away from people, away from people. There is a time, you know, you know, it's not about COVID. This isolation is not about anything to do with COVID. Or, but this isolation is your personal encounter with God. Certain areas before the next season, God will take you, God may take you to a place of isolation. Where people may not understand what you're speaking about. Where others may not give, stand along with you. 
And in that place of Kerith, God sent him to Kerith. And be there, I will provide you. And in that time, there is no public ministry. They just saw, you know, a man coming and they gone. That's it. In every man's life, there will be a season of Kerith. There will be a season where no one understands you. You will feel that you're alone. You may feel that God has already given up on you. You may feel that nothing is going to happen. You may feel discouraged in the time of Kerith. And we see that this man was in Kerith. Hallelujah. And the fifth one, after that season, we see about Elijah. The spirit of Elijah will dwell in enemy's territory. Sometimes, you know, in, in this verse, after Kerith, when, when Elijah was in the Kerith, next uh, uh, he saw that after a few days, after some days, this brook has dried up. We have seen brook has dried up. Everybody said brook has dried up. Brook has dried up. You know, when the brook has dried up, now the Lord said, you have to go to another place. And that place is known as Seraphat. You have to go to Seraphat. And I have commanded a widow there. And he will provide for you. The problem is, Seraphat is the enemy's territory. That is the place of Jezebel's family. Where, where the headquarters of, of Jezebel. Now God is saying you have to go to that enemy's territory. You know, in a time where they will kill every prophet of God. In a time where every man of, of, of Jehovah, you know, the name um, Elijah means, El means Lord, Jah means Yah, God, uh, means he is the God. Lord is the Lord. Hallelujah. Jehovah is the Lord. That is the name of Elijah. Mean what, what it means. And when he goes there, in front of a place, or the headquarters of black magicians, in the headquarters of sorcerers, and God is asking, you have to go there. Now, Elijah went to that place. And you know, you know something about something so wonderful. We, we sometimes boast, you know, we, we give more importance to black magicians that, uh, you know, every, every, every uh, enemy's weapons. We, we give him, give um, uh, a certain, you know, uh, um, false glory. It doesn't have, you know. In this chapter, Bible says he went there and he was provided well. And not even any of the black magicians noticed that this man is here. No sorcerers could trace out that Elijah is in their center. Hallelujah. This is how God works sometimes. When God hides you, no weapon of enemy will be able to trace you out. When God hides you under, your, under his wings, this is what happened. And I, you know, in the, in the book of Exodus, we see the same thing. Moses grew in the palace of the Pharaoh. You know, the same person who was trying to kill every baby born, every, every boy child. And you know, the palace of Pharaoh in those days is not just a palace, not king's palace. It is the headquarters of black magicians. All this, you know, um, uh, sorcerers and, and all these magicians, everybody sits around the king. And here on that midst, God put Moses. And all these years, these people could not find out the one who is going to come back and save. Hallelujah. That is the wonderful ways that God, God puts you. Hallelujah. God hides you when no magician can raise you. God hides you when no enemy can see you. Hallelujah. Now Elijah is standing in the midst and the headquarters of, of Jezebel. Nobody knew. No one saw. No one could understand. Because when God hides you, 
Hallelujah. That is our God. Can we lift our hands and say hallelujah? That is my God. That is my God. Hallelujah. He hides you when no enemy can see you. He hides you. He hides you. Hallelujah. Can, you can receive it. He will hide you in times of trouble. He will hide you. Many times you don't know why, you, why such things have gone away from your life. Why such things, you know, what the enemy has kept you. Because he has hidden you. He hides you. Why certain accidents gone away from you. Why? Because God hid, hid you from the enemy. Hallelujah. And, and this man went to Sarafat. And verse 9 says, Go at once to Sarafat in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Sarafat. And he was provided with two things. Two things. One, flour. And second thing is oil. Flour, which made bread, represents the word of God. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of the enemy, God will provide you with the word. And he will provide you with the anointing. Hallelujah. If while the enemies are still searching for you, they are still looking for you to kill you. God will provide the word that is needed for you to strengthen you. And he will provide you with the anointing and the power to keep you against every trouble. Hallelujah. Everybody who would say, Lord, I need this anointing. Lord, I need that. Hallelujah. That word in the midst of enemies. Hallelujah. That anointing, that oil anointing in the midst of every enemy that is against me. Hallelujah. See, there's a wonderful verse in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 9. I believe, you know, if God said to Elijah, go to a king, I will provide to you. Go to a, a rich man, I will provide to you. Go to that palace, I will provide to you. It makes sense. But God said like this, go to that widow, I will provide to you. Hallelujah. See, in Jeremiah, we see a wonderful verse. It says, Jeremiah 15, verse 19. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will bring you back and you shall stand before me. If you take out the precious from the wild, you shall be my mouth. If you take the precious from the wild, the, the New American Standard Bible says like this. Um, you, if you return, I will restore to you. You will stand before me. If you extract the precious from the worthless. If you extract the precious from the worthless. God extracts precious from the worthless. Hallelujah. See, in other sites, there is no way that this widow would provide. There is no chance that this widow can give anything. But when Elijah stood there, he saw the precious in the worthless. Even though it was so worthless, he saw there is a way that God has given. Hallelujah. We need to be, we need our spiritual eyes to be open to see this. We need that anointing to see the precious way of the Lord, even in the worthless situation, even in worthless lives. God sees gold in the, in, in the midst of every charcoal and coal and everything. That is our God. Elijah saw the precious provision that God is giving. Hallelujah. That is the anointing of Elijah. And six one is he have a habit of hearing the voice of heaven from his prayer. Hallelujah. Hearing the voice of heaven. Hallelujah. Sajiva, so, if you could um, give it back. Hallelujah. We see Elijah did one thing. He bowed down in, in, in the chapter of 17. We see like in 18. And so... Elijah said to Ahab, 18 verse 41, Go eat and drink, for there is a sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Camel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between the knees. Go and look towards the sea, he said to the servant. And when he went up and looked, there is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. 
The seventh time the servant reported a cloud as small as, small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. And they say, go and tell Ahab. Hallelujah. The principle is, the Elijah anointing always desires to hear what the hand of God is doing. When others were looking to the skies, Elijah bowed down. He kept his head on the, on the floor. Such a humble man. When he kept the head on the floor, he heard in his spiritual ears sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. You will only hear the sound of revival when you have the habit of putting your head to the ground and say, Lord, I want to hear. Servants went seven times. They could not see anything. Elijah has already heard it. Elijah saw it and he heard it. The hand of God that is coming. The hand of God that is coming. That is the Elijah. That is the spirit of Elijah. That God gave to a man called John the Baptist. He saw when others didn't see. He saw, when others saw that this is the man, this is the carpenter's son. John saw Messiah walking. John saw the Lamb of God who is going to take away the sin of the world. Elijah's mantle opens your ears and your eyes to see the unseen and to hear the unseen. The Elijah mantle is not a normal mantle. It's not just an ordinary one. It is so powerful that you will start seeing the precious one in the worthless. Elijah's anointing discerns things. Hallelujah. Jezebel always wants to go against this anointing. See, Jezebel is an, is an office. Delilah is an office. There are many such offices. Hallelujah. Of, of false, false, you know. Who will, who, who will go against the men and women of God. But God has poured out this anointing to discern things, to, to hear things from heaven. If you, if you can't hear it, you can't blame God. The abundance of rain is in the, in the atmosphere. But if you are ready to put your head down on the floor and say, Lord, I want to hear. Open my eyes. Open my ears. I want to hear that voice of heaven. Hallelujah. The desire, that desire is what the anointing of Elijah. The seventh one is when everything seems to be done with Elijah, he was depressed, he was down, just like a normal man, he was depressed. God spoke to him like this, your, your ministry is not over, Elijah. Your ministry is not over. You have the most important ministry to anoint the next generation. You have to lay hands on the kings. You have to lay hands on the prophets. You are you're a person who don't even have an address. A person who came from nowhere. Hallelujah. Is called by God to anoint a generation that would stand for God. Hallelujah. Now everything, every, every spiritual atmosphere of Israel is toppled around. Hallelujah. They, you have to anoint Elisha and he will take care of Jezebel. Don't worry about the situation. Hallelujah. That is the mantle that Elijah carried. Hallelujah. You know, this is not a person's name. This is the name of a mantle that God is giving in this New Testament time to his church, hallelujah, to anoint the next generation, to be prophets of God, to be teachers, to be preachers the, and, the, and, and the evangelists, hallelujah, to lay hands on them, to anoint them. You will not only anoint the, the, uh, for the kingdom of God, you will also anoint them to be kings, to be presidents, hallelujah. That is the great anointing of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah. Hallelujah. Lord said to him, go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. And when, when you get the anointed Hazel, king over Aram, 
sickness. This man who don't have an address is now anointing the kings. Anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. Anoint Elisha, son of Saphat of Abel, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazel. And Elijah will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed down to Baal. And those mouths who has not kicked him. Hallelujah. That is the faithfulness of a God. God, he says, I have preserved them for me. I have preserved them. This is the end time revival. Where God preserves his people. Hallelujah. The end time revival is going to be a faceless revival. A nameless revival. It will, it will start from nowhere. People who don't have an address. People who, who don't have a limelight to share. Yeah, hallelujah. Only thing is they fight their battles on their needs to hear. On the knees they will hear the sound of abundance of rain from nowhere. Hallelujah. That is the end time revival. Hallelujah. The spirit of Elijah had to come before Messiah's appearance. Hallelujah. And I feel the strong anointing right now being flowing in this place. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand up right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, Lord Father. Rekha, we pray for that anointing to be released. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not on big names, but on the names whose heaven, heaven knows. An anointing to break the powers of Jezebel. An anointing to break the powers of Baal. Every sexual per 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 pervertedness. Everything will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ from this land. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray, Lord Father. And we declare just like Elijah. Until I say, until I say. Lord, we pray favor of God upon this land, Lord Father. Lord, we bless this land. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Can you lift your hands and say glory, glory, Jesus? Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God, for you are holy and greatly to be praised, the Lamb upon the throne. The Lamb upon the throne. May you are glorious and greatly to be praised. The Lamb upon the throne. And I Hallelujah. Today while we are praying, we pray certain spirits of witchcrafts. I feel in the spirit that certain strongholds of the witchcraft being broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may not know about it, but God has hidden you. God has hidden you. Out of the territory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We break every such yokes. Every such yokes. 
the spirit of witchcraft's been broken hallelujah re ba na da re kha ma na da ra ma na sha da ni am da ra re da na da re kha re am da ra hallelujah right now i pray for every online listeners lord be blessed we break every spirit of witchcraft hallelujah certain sicknesses that is weighing you down certain thoughts of negativity that comes from nowhere in the name of jesus i break it right now how every such thoughts from the camp of the enemy we break it and we pray lord father and a anointing and a mantle of elijah been released right now father for the glory of god a mantle a mantle of of esther jebra been released right now re pa ma ma ka shada na bari and but i pray right now father for every listeners right now every weaknesses being cancelled every weaknesses for no reason you're going going from from sadness to grief in the name of jesus that cycle of sadness and grief i break in the name of jesus christ hallelujah amen amen can we lift our hands and say for you are glorious